This short screencast is looking at the axial and appendicular skeleton. As you'll be able to see over here on the teacher's note, uh, the actual bones that we do need to be able to look at. So the axial skeleton is referring to our skull, ribs, sternum, our vertebral column, and we do need to know the breakup of this, but we'll look at that in a little bit. And then our appendicular skeleton, our pectoral girdle, so scapula and clavicle, humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals and phalanges, and then our pelvic girdle, and we need to know ilium, ischium and pubis, but a little bit more of that in a minute. Femur, patella, tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. Looking at our skeleton here, we can see the colour differentiation between the axial and appendicular skeleton. So essentially, the axial skeleton is our centre part, so our skull, our spine, and our thorax. Whereas our appendicular skeleton, or our appendages, we're looking at shoulder girdle and arms, pelvic girdle, and our legs. The bones of our axial skeleton, so we have our skull, we have our vertebral column, and we have our ribs. So in between our ribs we have our sternum, is that ribs? So that's our axial skeleton, appendicular. We have our clavicle. Now remember C for clavicle, C for collarbone. We have our scapula, S for scapula, S for shoulder blade. We have then our humerus, which is our upper arm. We have our radius. Now our radius runs to our thumb. So when we stand in the anatomical position, the radius is the lateral of the two bones. The other is the ulna, which is the medial of the two forearm bones. We have our carpals, which are our wrist bones. We then have our metatarsals and our phalanges, which are the endpoints of our hand. We have our pelvic girdle, and again, we'll break that up in a minute. We have our femur, our patella is our kneecap, and then we have our tibia, which is the larger of the two lower leg bones, and it's the medial of the two. And then we have our fibula, which is the lateral and smaller of the two. Our tarsals, which essentially make up our ankle joint. We then have our metatarsals and our phalanges being the endpoints. So they're the bones that we need to know. looking at our spine and when we do look at the spine in this instance our head is facing that way so I'm just going to write A for anterior P for posterior so the spine is broken up into our 
cervical curvature, which has seven bones. Our thoracic curvature, 12 bones. Our lumbar region, which has five bones. And then our sacrum and coccyx, which have five and four bones respectively. And these bones are fused. So there's no movement that occurs between those. So they actually really appear as two separate bones, one coccyx bone and one sacrum bone, although they are made up of five and four fused bones. When looking at the spine, the different regions occur when the direction of the curvature changes. So our cervical, we have a direction here, then our thoracic changes, so it's in that direction, lumbar where it's in that direction and sacrum that way with our coccyx in there. So they're the different regions of our spine. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum and coccyx. The last thing that we look at is going to be the actual pelvic girdle itself. Now the regions that we need to know are our ilium, which is this major part of bone up the top, our pubis, which is shaded in red, and our ischium, which is shaded in purple. Now, when we're looking at the diagram over here on the right, this is the anterior aspect and the posterior aspect. So if we had our femur in here, kneecap over on that side. So our pubic bone is the front in here and our ischium is this part here at the back. 